understand that we have to not only have faith, but we have to activate our faith to be able to touch the author and the finisher of our faith. Come on, clear your throats real quick. When we grow through reading, the victory according to his holy word. Read. Our role in the trial is that we have to release the whole of our care. How much of it? The whole. Are you sure it's the whole of it? The whole of our care. The whole of our care. Come on. To the master Jesus and continue to trust God through the entire process. Through the entire process. Hebrews 4 and 2. Listen, you have to have faith. Hebrews 4 and 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. Listen, but the word what? Listen, but the word preached, to my, that word coming from the total logos of God, the total counsel of God. Yeah. For the word priest did not profit them, yeah. not being mixed with faith yeah. in them that heard it. So we're going to activate faith. Yeah. You'll just be hollering and screaming right. if you don't activate your faith. Yeah. Say amen to the word of God. Yeah. And then we're going to walk the word out. Yes. Listen, because our audience is looking at us. Yes. We're talking about the world. Yes. The world is looking for an example. Yes. The world wants us, listen, to not only live what we preach, but we'll be able to win them. Yes. Because of what we preach. But not because of what we preach, but the cause of what they see us walk out. Amen, and we're going to do better, aren't we? Amen. Watch this. The battle is what? Not yours. That's straight from heaven. Come on. And what? I wish that was, I wish that was just that easy. We're going to go over here to Second Chronicles 20 and 17. We'll be reading in the NLT. Watch this. I want you to look at the posture that the Lord want us to be in. Because I'm, I'm telling us that we don't always get it right. And if you was perfect, you would be playing golf, golfing somewhere, bowling somewhere. But because we're in the house of God, we know that we want to do better in being in position to not only receive the word of God, but the past these tests yeah. that we will continue yeah. to grow through. Yeah. Now listen to what he told the man of God. We're over in Chronicles. We get that word from the Greek word chronos. Yeah. He's talking about the chronological effects dealing with the children of Israel, the kings and, and all those people. And so now he's dealing with Israel He's dealing with them battling the enemy. It's just like us, guys. It was about 145,000 when we get to Judges. Mm. Listen, and it looks like that you're outnumbered in every situation that you deal with. Oh Listen, it's for us to be outnumbered, so we're going to try to take the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. And so everybody else might be challenged, might not necessarily be saved on your job. But you are saved. Amen. And God is expecting us to not only live the life, we don't have to taunt the devil. You don't have to go with a big old uh, 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 family Bible. You know, them big Bibles, you just, we never did read them. <laughs> have a nice, nice little picture on the surface of it. Look, I, I know about me. Let me talk about her. My mama would dust hers. Sometimes she's move it and then dust underneath it. 
But that big old jive Bible don't do anything unless we expect to walk it out. And we're going to do that, aren't we? Watch this. But you what? Listen to what he said. Read, everybody. Man, I wish it was that easy. Oh, they love hearing that part. Listen, but you would not have to fight. Because God is saying, the battle is not yours. It's mine. I know you're feeling the residual effects of it. But I didn't ask you to grab your pistol and shoot at nothing. God said, what I want you to do is take a certain position. Come on, read it. Come on, everybody. Take. Take your Taking your position is not uh, uh, arming yourself. Yeah. Well, you got good knees. Come on, son. <laughs> Get on your knees right there. Lift your hands up. That's your position. Yeah. You see? And then, come on, come on, God. You're going to play God for a minute. Mm -hmm. Just stand over and whisper in his ear, I am God. Come on, say it. No, you're talking to the whole audience. You ain't just talking to him. <laughs> Say it loud. I am God. Come on, this other side. Come on. I have God. equipped you. I have equipped you. I have equipped you. To stand in righteousness. Stand in righteousness. To stand still. Yes. To be able to see the salvation of the Lord. Yes. I know that things are growing around you. Sometimes the enemy tries to confuse you. But just like I had you win in the last battle, you're going to win this one. But your position is either here, stand up, son, or your position is either there. And what you're saying is, Father, I give you the glory. You hadn't, listen, I give you the honor. It all belongs to you. I'm going to go ahead and shout right now. I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. Because I know in you, I move. I breathe. I have my being. It's all because of you. Lord, when I, you just blow my mind. Listen, ain't no man got no rap like that. You mean to tell me when I just think of your goodness? It calls me to throw my hands up and surrender to you? God said, I can do it like that and some more. I'm trying to get the body of Christ. <laughs> In the right position. Yes. God said I can only do that. To give us a trial. And a test where you really need me. You really want me. And you're not coming to me because you're fearful. But you're coming to me because I did it before. Somebody say amen. amen. So we trust God. Look at the position. Oh, glory. You don't even need to fight. What I want you to do is take your position. Listen. Come on, read. Then do what? Then stand still. Listen, and watch the Lord's. Whose victory is it, Michael? It's the Lord's. If I could just get Harold out of the way. Harold can really mess some stuff up. If I could just move myself out of the way and allow God to do exceedingly abundantly. I just always got two cents to put in the trial. When God has designed 
the trial for me to have victory. Because he made it. With your name on it. It means that we can handle it. But I can't get you out of the way. Oh, glory. Carson, I want you to trust me. And know that I'm God. God said there's things that we should have done and been through it. Ten years ago. And we're still dealing with stuff. Listen, stuff that we shouldn't even be dealing with. God say, trust me. Well, if you see me receiving greater trials, listen to me, it's only because you've grown in faith. It's not because you are a sinner. It's not because you are messing up. It's a deal that if it's not bigger than the cross, we can handle it. And the closer I get to God, the more the enemy turns up the heat. It's a principle. It lets you know that you're with God. He says, so you don't have to fight. He says, you take your positions. Not only do that, but what? But stand still. Watch the Lord's. Victory. God don't take us through tests to embarrass himself. If we see embarrassment, it's because we didn't follow the full plan of God. God said, listen, I bless you for a purpose. Because I know when you went through that test, and at the end of that test, you were going to glorify me. It wasn't going to be about your pastor. It wasn't going to be about your bishop. It wasn't going to be what your nana taught you, your daddy taught you. Your... It's going to be, oh, God brought me through. Come on, rehearse that. God brought me through. And then he gives them an assurance. He says, I'm with you. Now, that's an awesome insurance. You are assured that God has the victory in your life. Now, he's talking now to Judah and Israel. Judah and Jerusalem. You see that? Pick it up with the uh, purple light paper. Do not what? Then he, then he secures the soul. Because you're getting ready to go into battle. I don't know if you've ever been in the battle or not. Any soldiers in the house? Anybody been to Iraq or Afghanistan or somewhere where you had to grab your, your weapon for real? Hey, we got a couple of y'all. I guess the rest of y'all just worked at Dentag. <laughs> But we, listen, but no matter what your capacity is, I could have a weapon. But when I need my two pull, I couldn't find that weapon until I got my two pull. <laughs> so we all to service an awesome God. We all have, listen, a responsibility. So what I want you to do tomorrow, I want you to do something. Now I told you you didn't have to fight, but tomorrow, <laughs> You see that? Read it. Go what? Go out them I'm giving you time to meditate on it. On. <laughs> I, wish, I wish the Lord was like that. You know, you see a trial and you get to say, well, Lord, give, give me about six more hours. I think I'll be able to. At least he gave them to tomorrow morning. He gave them to tomorrow morning. Listen. Bid farewell to their families. Uh -huh. And there was a season to fight. They were in that season. And he says, what? For the Lord. Say it one more time. For the Lord is with you. For the Lord is with you. 
Some of us may be growing through trials right now, but God is with you. Amen. Remember that. God is with you. Amen. Now watch this. Read. Isn't that something? <laughs> so I got to stop pouring me into the situation. Now watch this. Go over here to St. John chapter 3, verse 30. And we're going to hit our main text, and we're going to be out of here. Now watch this. We're reading from the KJV. This is St. John, the gospel according by St. John, reading about 100 years after the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's talking now to the saints of God. He's talking to the people of God. Yeah. Listen, here in this particular text, John the Baptist is dealing with his disciples. He, he had just heard that uh, Jesus had come on the scene. Well, he knew that because if you turn uh, into the Gospel of Matthew, uh, the, the man of God, John the Baptist, was the forerunner. Right. When you look at the word of God, we understand that he has nothing to do with the New Testament church. He is the last of the old prophets of the old covenant. And so now in the text, so you get better understanding of it, we see that he began to tell his, his disciples, listen, he began to tell him that, that, that Jesus is authorized to do that. And he tells them in a story. And he is the friend, the prophet. Listen, the bride is the church, and of course the bridegroom is Jesus. So we pick up our story in St. John. I want you to read the rest of it for yourself. St. John chapter 3, verse 30, KJV. What does it say? He must increase, but I must decrease. Listen to what he says. So, so John say, it's time for him to come on the stage. Uh -huh. John said, I'm going to have to decrease my uh, decrease in what I do for ministry because I don't have I don't want to have people looking at me. Amen. It's about him receiving the honor. Amen. Clear your throats. Read the slide, daughter. Clear your throats. The uh, that's actually NLT. What does it say? He must what? He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. Oh, uh, if, if we did that in our trials, we'd probably be all right. right. We'd probably be asking the Lord to send us send us through a trial. Uh, I'm just talking about Harold now because y'all because y'all look at me look goofy when I'm you know no listen when, when when we decrease then God increases it's just like now John say bowing now John was the brother that was eating listen John the Baptist was the brother that was eating locusts listen hopper grass wild honey he had baptized many, and we understand that Jesus baptized none. But people are baptized now in the New Covenant Church, first century church in Jesus' name. So John said, in order for me to do this right, I understand that I have a role that I have to play. And now I'm getting ready to close, listen, the old covenant I represent the old covenant. Now Jesus come in. He represents the new covenant and the fulfiller of the old covenant. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Y'all get it? Amen. Now we go into Judges. Let's go to chapter 7. Amen. Chapter 7. In the book of Judges is from Joshua. Listen, it's from the end of Joshua or the death of Joshua. Listen to Samuel. And in there, there was no king, no voice, no ruler to be able to speak into the destiny of Israel. As a matter of fact, the judges are 13 men. One woman, Deborah. And they had certain defects in their ministry. God did that on purpose. Because I don't want you to get raised up where you think that you can do it by yourself. And so now we're dealing with, even though they had defects and they had challenges in their ministry. 
He says, now, what I'm going to do, if you just yield your total being to me, you will see me working as a sovereign God to be able to show you and meet you at your destiny. And so we pick up our story in chapter 7. The awesome leader this time is Gideon. And Gideon, listen, went on the carpet of Jesus. Listen, this particular situation is that Joshua is going to have to take him out of this situation. There was 145,000 Midianites. Listen, the man of God's Gideon's army started off with 32,000. So he was already outnumbered four to one. And then it became, when God used it, it became 450 to one. And the deal is, God say, now we're ready to do some battle. Oh, y'all don't like that. Watch this. So it's what? Read. And we say, yeah, amen. amen. Read. Remember, the old thing opens the door to the spirit of pride. And we know we're not proud for people. Amen. amen. Let's go to our text. And we're going to start at verse number two, KJV. Come on, so we can get out of here. And the Lord said unto Gideon. Now the, watch this. The Lord said unto Gideon. Come on. The people that are with thee are too many for me to he give. He said automatically the people that are with you are too many. And what God does when, when he does that, what he's saying is he don't leave any option yes. for you to be able to sow in All your right. situation in a way yeah, to defer, it. listen, to enhance or to stop what he wants to do in your life. So the first thing he said, he's looking over the cliff to where the Midianites are in the valley up on the hill. And he's saying, listen, I'm looking at how many soldiers I got. And most of these guys, at least two-thirds of them, are afraid. Right. But he tells him that he have too many. Mm Mm-hmm. Watch this. Come on, read. The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Come on. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying. So here's the reason. Lest Israel do what? Vaunt themselves read against the NLT, me. Read NLT, daughter. Come on. Second verse. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. Mm-hmm. If I let you fight the Midianites, Come on. Israel, Israelites will boast to me that they saved they, they, themselves. They, they boast. They, we, we did it ourselves. That's a bad place to be in. Because not only did you get free from that test, but God going to have to give you another one to deal with pride. Did y'all get that? Come on, back to KJV. What did it say? Mine own hand has saved me. Third verse. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. A weapon and a fearful person. We end up having fracticide. You end up shooting something and injuring uh, uh, friendly soldiers because you're fearful. And when you're fighting a battle, you know that our war is spiritual. We know we only have one enemy, and that's who? The devil. I like the little uglier name, Slewfoot, Satan. You see? So we only have one enemy, right? Right. Can I watch this? Read. Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. So, so let, him, let him return. Mm, L- mm, listen, mm. The, the, the challenge is, is the re- residual effects of what Gideon said. All right. Read. And there returned of the people 20 and 2,000. And there remained 10,000. We just lost two-thirds of the people that we were going to fight 100 and 
40 some thousand or so mm -mm. and I'm looking at the people that's leaving hmm. we were already out never have you ever felt like that in a trial it seemed like the more you do the more you pay your tithes the more you do righteousness it looked like listen the enemy got the upper hand and then you get another bill and when you get another bill, and you're like, man, and then the devil says, see, you should have should have kept your tithes. Uh -huh. right, right, right. And what you do, listen, just rejoice in heaven. Because when you do righteousness, listen, the God don't bless us doing unrighteousness. The God blesses us doing righteousness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't don't let the enemy's taunting stop you from doing what we know we have to do. Now watch this. Read, baby. Come on, what is that? Fourth verse. And the Lord said unto Gideon, what did he the say? people are yet too many. Bring the, the people are too many. Now hold up, Lord. Mm -hmm. Give me ten people real quick. Come on, real quick. Listen to me. Now come here, come here, come here. Come here, sister Junior. Come here, daughter. Junior, come on. You come on, daughter. Stand right here. Stand right here. Come up, come up, Minister Joy, come up. See that, that powerful woman of God right there with the, with the funny grin? Watch this. When you are looking at this timidity automatically tries to enter. All right. When fear and timidity tries to enter, you don't base your faith where you are right now, even yeah. though we have to. Yeah. But we based it upon the battles that God has already run in your life. Hallelujah. You see, we look at it, Michael, what God has done in the past. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was walking. Yeah. So listen, the Lord blessed me with this, and he blessed me. Then all of a sudden, that tore up. Well, I remember when I was pulling a red wagon. So I'm still doing better than I was doing in the past. The devil is a liar. So what I do, I look at what God has already done. Listen, I throw my hands up and say, Father, I know you have already won this victory. Now I understand why you told me not to go out and mess things up. More of, yes, more of you, less of me. Yes, and when we do that, God said, baby, now you got it. Amen. Now listen to what he said. Come on, read. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, Come on. this shall go with thee, the mm -hmm. same shall go with thee, and whomsoever I say unto thee, Come on. this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. Come on. Fifth verse. So, he so, brought, so hold on. So what he's telling Gideon Listen, I know you're outnumbered. I know you got some challenge. I even know that you're looking at your enemy. But what he's telling them now is I don't want you to change the rules midstream. What I tell you to do, that's what you do. What I tell you to say, that's what you say. When I tell you to praise me, that's when you praise me. Listen, when I tell you to keep silent, that's when you keep silent. All right. It's all about my plan. If you expect for me to do my plan, yes, we're going to have to follow his rule. Yes. Glory, glory. That's what he's saying. Whoever I select, you see, whoever I reject, you see that? Amen. Now watch this. Come on, read. Fifth verse, so he job. brought down the people unto the water. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, Come on. him shalt thou set by himself. He, he's talking about those that are humble enough to be in position to understand that they're lapping like a dog. That's just standing on their feet. And they're lapping like a dog watching. That's right, exactly. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Did I look ugly when I did that? <laughs> You see, but you understand the complacency yeah. of the other group because they were acting like they were on a picnic. Uh. And they were bowing down and I don't really want to be here no way. Yeah. You know, wasn't looking at nothing, 
Just go up and right, you right, see. Right. So he's talking about those that are humble, prepare for war, yes, have yes, a yes. right attitude about what they're getting ready to do, versus the people. Listen, and we don't have dead weight in faith mission. Now watch this. Come on, real quick. Likewise, everyone that bows down upon his knees to drink. Sixth verse. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. Seventh verse. Listen to me. When we're deficient, and you know the rest of the story, I'm finished. Boop, there it is. <laughs> Y'all have a seat. So we know the rest of the story. We know what happened. Yes. We know that God confused the enemy. Right. And when God does it his way, yes. listen, he will allow us to not only have the victory, yes. but he blesses us All in return. Amen. Listen. And what we're going to do is we're going to be a better church. We're going to be, do and be a better church because we can. Well, are you talking about this, bit, this building? No, sir. No, ma'am. I was saying earlier that ministry starts at home. Amen. Ministry don't start at the church. And when we do ministry effectively in the house, then it's easy to come to this building and declare that Jesus is Lord.